Hey photo friends, Phil Ebener here. Today I am editing a student submitted photo. I thought it would be a good idea to create a tutorial on this because I think it will help other people with similar issues. This photo was submitted by Nathaniel. So thank you Nathaniel for the question and also thank you for allowing me to create this tutorial. If you're interested in submitting a photo to a uh, be edited uh, in a tutorial format like this, reach out to me. You can join Photography and Friends, the group on Facebook, if you are a part of that uh, in one of my courses, or send a message over to support at videoschoolonline.com. I think in the future there will be a more official way to submit photos uh, because I think this could be a cool thing. So Nathaniel set, submitted this photo of a couple people in front of this aquarium. I took a very similar shot actually in Hawaii at the Waikiki uh, Aquarium and it's a really cool setup. Uh, he asked if, the, if there was any way to brighten up the exposure of the people in the foreground, but keep the dark blue color of the background. So this is a tricky photo. Luckily, we do have a raw photo to work with, and that's going to help us out a lot. That being said, um, there will be some limitations, and that's what we're going to see. So the first thing I would do just if I got this photo, uh, if I took it and I brought it into Lightroom, which I'm using Lightroom Classic, is to do a quick test just to see what happens if I bring up the exposure. This is a quick way just to see what kind of information we have. So obviously I'm not going to make my photo turn into this, but you can see that if I do this, there is information, but you get so much noise and grain by bringing up the exposure. So the issue with this photo is going to be the balance between trying to expose the people in the foreground properly with the noise and grain that you get. And ultimately, this will have a better, a, a bigger effect where the end product is going to go. Cranking the up the exposure of the people uh, in the foreground, something like this, so that everything's exposed. Uh, obviously, that doesn't look that good right now, but we're going to play with it. That might be okay if we're just posting this online. But if we're going to print it out, you're not going to want to have that digital noise and grain because that's going to be very no noticeable in a print. So now that we kind of know what information we're going with, what I would do is play a little bit more with the specific sliders. So here down below, I'll bring up just the shadows and obviously that's a better way of adjusting this photo. So we have specific sliders that's bringing up mostly the shadowy uh, exposure of the foreground. The blacks is a slider I generally don't bring up too much because it starts to make a photo look faded unless that's the style you're going for. But really, I don't have much more room to go with just the shadow slider or the black slider. So what I might do is boost the overall exposure to get the foreground subjects as close as possible to what I want, and then decrease the highlights and the whites. And I might even add some uh, adjustment filters like a brush or a graduated filter or even use the HSL panel to decrease the saturation of the background. So in general, this is a quick approach. I think this looks better. It's not great, but it's better. What I really want to do, though, is try to edit these elements individually. So like I mentioned with the background, what I could do is see, go to my HSL panel, go to luminance, and then I can pick my color picker, this little button right there, and drag over or just move my mouse over and then click and drag down in the water. And that's going to bring down the luminance or the exposure of the blues. And you see this slider go down and up as I do that. Or I could just pick this slider and do it. But as you see, when I did the specific color picker, it also moved down some of the aqua as well. Now, doing that too much starts to look 
pretty awkward. You see this line around the edge of this person in the foreground and it just doesn't look natural. So you don't wanna go too far, but that helps. Let me just turn this on and off. It keeps that blue of the water dark and saturated. If you wanna change the hue or make it even more saturated, you can do that with just the saturation here under HSL. And just for the blues, since we know it's mostly blue we're affecting, I can boost the blues. Or for hue, if I wanna change it to more of a green or more of a dark blue towards purple, I can do that. But notice as I do that, especially with the saturation, you can see that the blue that's being reflected on this person's face also starts to get a little bit affected. So that's not necessarily how I want to edit the blue saturation of the background. What I wanna do is use a brush or a graduated filter to edit the people in the background even more. So starting with the background, probably the easiest way to do this is select a graduated filter. We're basically selecting the entire image at this point, but we want all of this blue, so I'm just gonna click and drag over here, which means my selection is going to be everything on the left, but I want to make sure I'm only selecting the blue, so I can turn on a range mask for color, use my eyedropper to click somewhere in the blue where I think it's gonna be best, and so now it selects mostly the blue. I can increase this amount to include more of the blue. I can even, instead of just clicking one area, I can click and drag to select a range of blues and that will select more of the different range of blues uh, and hues. And what I could even do further is actually erase the parts that are selected for the people, which I don't want to make adjustments for. So clicking brush, clicking erase, I am going to have auto mask on and then you can see what happens when I brush off. It's probably a little hard for you to see, but that magenta overlay that's showing the mask that we have created is now basically getting, we're brushing that off for both of these people here. Now the lady in the back, the exposure is pretty good, so we don't have to do too much with her so now we're just selecting, pressing O on my keyboard. You can see the background is mostly selected. You can crank up this amount even more. And now what we can do is make our adjustments to our exposure and the color. So if we wanna decrease the exposure of the blues in the background or adding some blue with this color filter here, we can take this color picker drag it up, makes it even more blue. I wanna keep a little bit of that aqua in there, that teal aqua color. We could boost the saturation. We could decrease just the highlights. Maybe decrease the blacks. You could play around with a lot here. So that's one way that you can play around with the background and make sure that if you are boosting the overall exposure of this photo, the background, the blue of the aquarium and the water is still good. All right, similarly, what we can do is using the an adjustment brush, we can take it further with the exposure of our foreground elements. So pressing O or checking on this box down here so we can see what we are selecting. I'm just going to paint on over here. And if I click and I start inside this guy right here, you can see that as I get close to the edge, the auto mask feature does a decent job at not going into the background and that's going to depend on what you're, where you're kind of painting on and the contrast bef between the foreground and the background elements, but it does a pretty good job. See that? It's pretty good. All right, so now we have our guy selected. Press O to turn off the overlay. And now we can boost the exposure. Now. The issue just in general with this photo is that we don't have a ton of information. It was just too dark in this location. So a lot of this information is just lost completely. If we zoom in here, you see that as we boost that exposure just on this guy, you get so much noise and grain. 
There's things you can do to reduce that noise. You can, in this specific brush, crank up this noise slider, and that's going to soften some of this noise. But you, it, again, it's just kind of a balance of what you think looks good. I don't want this guy to start to look completely faded compared to the rest of this photo. That just doesn't look that good. So I might boost the shadows just a little bit. When I boost the shadows to keep it contrasty, I actually bring down the blacks just a little bit. And this is another point for this photo and just photography in general. Underexposure is not necessarily a bad thing. This is an example of this person was standing in front of a bright aquarium, so it doesn't make complete sense that he would be perfectly lit unless there was a flash or a light shining on him. So having a little bit of shadow and darkness in his his clothes and in his skin is completely fine. But that being said, you still want to be able to see his face. You see his expression. He's so excited looking up at these fish. And so here I can show you the before and after. This is doing a decent job at allowing us to see more of his his face and his expression. That being said, this is a completely personal choice. Honestly, the silhouette style is not a bad idea. I kind of like the silhouette. You know, I'm looking at the before and after and I think I'm I'm hopefully answering the question from Nathaniel, how do I increase the exposure of my foreground elements? But do you really want to do that? It's up to you. Another thing too is someone might look at this and say, oh, well, there's so much blue being reflected on his skin. I'm going to go ahead and boost the temperature to try to figure out how to get a proper white balance. So boosting the temperature here and boosting the tint actually gives a much more natural color temperature. And that's maybe where you wanna go. But again, it's kind of a personal preference and honestly, having uh, that blue, bluish uh, light reflecting on his skin isn't necessarily a bad thing. Now, this is a kind of quick edit of this guy and this, his photo. If you zoom in here, the edges of things, the selections of things might not be completely perfect. I'm gonna go in here, make a, a couple quick adjustments I can see his like nail and part of his forehead and his nose aren't selected. So these adjustments aren't being applied to it. If you want to go take this to a next level, what you could do is actually edit this in Photoshop. And what you could do with any photo in Lightroom is you right click it, you go up to edit in and then edit in Photoshop. And it's going to send the photo to Photoshop where with Photoshop, you have more powerful masking tools that allow you to edit just parts of the image. So I'll see you in Photoshop in just a second. So this photo has been sent over to Photoshop. So the way to select the subject is to choose this uh, magic wand tool right here. This is our selection br brush or quick selection tool actually. And so what you do with that is you just click and drag over your subject. And as you can see, it automatically starts to do a pretty good job selecting our subject. We can go in here and actually click select and mask. And then we could play around with these settings such as there is an edge detection slider that does a more sort of automatic intelligent uh, way of selecting, ch checking on that smart radius, uh, enhances it even more, maybe smoothing just a little bit and adding a little bit of feathering, just a tiny bit will help create a better kind of uh, mask for this one and then click OK. And then I'm going to copy this layer. So I just copied and pasted it. So now we have this individual layer right here and we can apply in Photoshop adjustment layers to this, uh, this 
photo. So I'm doing this after I've made my adjustments in Lightroom. What you might want to do is start off doing this and just edit, uh, make those individual adjustments to the foreground person in Photoshop and then go back to Lightroom and finish your editing. Either way is fine. You can go, can go up to, with this layer selected, the foreground layer, go to layer, new adjustment layer. There's several options for adjusting exposure. One is levels. And when you do that, you want to make sure you check on use previous layer to create clipping mask. And that means it's only going to apply to the previous layer instead of the entire image. Otherwise, this adjustment layer, when you boost the exposure, everything's going to get brighter. So here you can see now we have the properties of this layer. And you can see that I can, it's more powerful in the sense that I can play with the exposure of just this part, this part of the image. That being said, you do have, you do get a lot of noise again. If we zoom in here, you can see we get a ton of noise as we boost that exposure, just because there's not that much information in the darks. But that being said, I think it actually looks a little bit better with those minor enhancements. What you can also do is apply a general noise reduction filter in, uh, in Photoshop, which is pretty powerful. So if we select this layer, go up to filter, noise, reduce noise. There's lots of options, but here we can see if it loads, we can see that we have some different strengths and preserving details, which will preserve edges and lines and things like that. Uh, lots of different things. So you can kind of compare and contrast. I know it's hard for you to see on the small video player you're watching, but on the right with noise reduction, if I go up to like strength eight or nine, it's even better. It takes a minute for it to load the preview, but compared to this on the left. So say we do that, say we're okay. And then we save this. And then we go back to Lightroom and our adjustments are actually, actually take place and they're what we see now in Lightroom. So these are a lot of different things that you could do to this photo and you see that, that adjustment just happened. This is a lot you can do to this photo. I didn't even look at this background, this lady in the background. It's it's pretty good though. I wouldn't make too many major adjustments to her. Um, and of course, if you don't have Lightroom, if you don't have Photoshop, you're not going to have all of these options, but most photo editing applications nowadays allow you to do basic things like adjusting the general exposure uh, based off of shadows, blacks, highlights, whites, uh, and things like that. So if we look at the before and after, and you'll notice now that we actually have a copied version from Photoshop here, and it's titled Edit. But if we go to the original one and we do a before and after view, so you can kind of compare and contrast what it looks like, I would probably spend a little bit more time, maybe tone down a little bit of the edits uh, for what I did to, to his individual brush, maybe dial down the overall saturation just a little bit. Uh, it looks a little unnatural to me, but hopefully you understand now what you can do and the power that you can do in Lightroom to a photo like this. If you have any questions, let me know. And as I mentioned, if you have your own photos that you'd like me to take a stab at, send them over to support at videoschoolonline.com, email them or connect with me on Facebook or Instagram or however you find me. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you in another lesson. Have a beautiful day.